Professor Soule, you, you haven't, I'm, I'm still not sure where you're coming down in this election cycle. I'm not voting for either candidate because neither one of them meets my standard for basic human beings to, to be even breathing air sometimes, but mostly just to, to be holding office. Uh, the, 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 obviously, I want them to live. But the, but the idea here is that, you know, my, my view is that neither candidate meets a basic standard. Well, do, you, do you view this as a lesser of two evils election, as some people like Mark Levin have claimed? Do you see this more as we're screwed either way we go, so there's no reason to participate uh, on the presidential level? How do you come down on this? Well, uh, my, my preference would be to leave the office vacant for four years and hope for better things in 2016. Uh, unfortunately, that's not one of the options that we have. Uh, I, I think it's going to be dangerous, and not merely bad, if either of them becomes president. Uh, the question is, where is the danger greatest and, and more importantly, the most long-lasting? And I think that uh, even though Donald Trump has no uh, coherent uh, vision uh, that, that looks, looks that promising, uh, Hillary Clinton does have a coherent vision. And it's a world in which she can, by determining who's on the next Supreme Court, for the next 50 years, Law in America can be undermined. The First and Second Amendments we can write off if she's allowed to put a majority on that court. And so long after, whether it's Clinton or Trump, long after they leave office, the people they put on the Supreme Court will, will be a, a legacy for the next generation and perhaps the end of constitutional law in this country. And on that basis, I, I would vote against Hillary Clinton. Yeah, and, and, and that's a logic I definitely hear. My counter logic, just to not vote at all, has basically been what I fear is that Donald Trump is doing a great job of perverting conservatism, and we're watching as many so-called conservative thought leaders have been shifting the very definition of conservatism to meet Trump. So suddenly a bunch of people who used to be pro-free trade, for example, are embracing the protectionism of Donald Trump. A bunch of people who wanted entitlement reform are now protecting that it's okay that he wants to expand entitlements. And so the only hope for the country, which is a true small government movement, is being quashed in order to, to gain the temporary gain of having him prevent Hillary Clinton from the White House. I suspect that those positions will be as temporary uh, as, as, as the Trump administration. And so I don't, I don't, I don't think that uh, the ideas are going to go away. I mean, Jimmy Carter uh, followed policies that appalled conservatives, but that didn't prevent Ronald Reagan from being elected after him.